my sermon today is going to be called, uh, What Are Your Gifts and Abilities? And we all know, we know that God gifts, gives us gifts and abilities, and that's what my message is going to be about today. And an approach that I had this New Year's is, or my mindset is, instead of, or I guess what I've usually done in the past too, is instead of having a New Year's resolution, because our I make a change in your life versus a, versus a resolution or a goal that you're trying to set. Because um, usually if you set a goal, you're going to frantically outpace yourself trying to get there and you'll quit, right? You're going to outpace what you're supposed to do, your workload, and it'll be too much and you might quit. So resolution is tough sometimes. What I've done in the past and what, about, what I always like to do is, is look back, reflect, and see what the status quo is, what's going on. Like if, if I'm using a a, a foam hammer to nail a hammer and nail, and I continue to do that, and it's not working. You know, I'm going to stop and, and reflect. Is this a good? Is this a good way to hammer in the nail? If not, I'm going to change it and, and get a steel hammer, right? So uh, that's all. I, that's the approach I always took is is to look at things that are going on, going on in my life and 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 make a small change, make adjustments, because um, your 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 life is really or your 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 day your day to day life is really a micro-fracture of what your life is going to look like. And I think that was, um, I heard that from Larry Stockstill, Joel's dad, if you don't know um, Joel Stockstill. But so that's my, that's my approach uh, to New Year's is, is either is try new stuff, make, make changes in, in what I'm currently doing. If, if something's not working, is reflect, you know, what I've been doing, is it, is it, is it helping or is it, is it a negative thing? So that, that can include, you know, fa- fasting, taking stuff out of your life, um, getting rid of... Um, uh, certain things that maybe social media time that's taking too much time or TV or whatever is making a status is making a change to the status quo or whatever is whatever you're currently doing, um, and oftentimes that will lead to you finding out new gifts. It'll also lead all, sometimes even lead you to your calling. Um, my question to you guys today is: Do you guys know what your calling is, or or do you guys know what your gifts and abilities are from from God? And oftentimes. If you don't know, it's because you're probably not you're, you're you're probably not seeking out new things or trying new things for Jesus. And sometimes the calling on, the calling in your life will be just a little nudge that God puts on your heart, and it's not always obvious. Um, God works in mysterious ways, and He's not forceful. He's not like He's not the devil. He's not going to tempt you and 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 force you and lead you and you know and and use yourself against you and and kind of trap you. God's very gentle. He's going to nudge on your heart and lead you. And he gives, we all have natural abilities and gifts that we have from God. And if we never are in the word and, and listen to God and listen to where he wants us to go, we'll never find out our abilities or, or gifts. So, my, my, uh, that, so that's my question to you guys. And my first scripture is going to be pretty simple. And it's going to be related to ministry and what you can do in ministry and what your calling in your life may be. For a while, I, I didn't know I was going to be, I was going to preach or, or be a leader. But uh, when I was younger, I always had this, like, deep down uh, feeling that I might preach, but I was deathly afraid of public speaking, so I, like, ran away from that thought every time it would come up. And sometimes that nudge, um, that, is, that, the, that little nudge that God has given you, you might be deathly afraid of it or, that, or the thought of doing it. Um, the fact that, I, I've said this before, the fact that I'm public speaking is, like, a miracle. It's like me jumping out of a plane, you know, it's... Um, I was deathly afraid of public speaking, but it was always a little nudge in my heart that I kind of knew that preaching might be in my calling, but I, I ran away from that thought. So um, this verse is going to just going to, or I guess my message is going to be to explore what gifts God can give us, what abilities he can give us, and what, how we can maybe find our calling or, or lean, lean towards our calling uh, that God is calling us to. If we turn to Acts uh, chapter 3, verse 6. It's going to be, oh, sorry, I didn't, give, I didn't give Daniel the verses, so he's scrambling back there. But Acts, so I'm going to go ahead and read it. It's Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Look at you, Daniel. Good job. Um, it says, but Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold, but what I'll have I'll give you in the name of Jesus Christ, or in the name of Jesus Christ Nazareth, and get up and walk. So I love this, love this passage. I've preached on it before, but uh, kind of more extensively on the story. But your gift or your calling might be as simple as just as giving what, what God has already given you, your ability. So the, Peter right here is displaying the ministry or he, his, the, the gift of, of serving. Or th- There's many ways to explain it, but he's giving from what he has, right? He, 
he's in his ministry, he knows, and, he's, and God is using him. And so where are they, what areas of ministry is God pulling your heart towards? That's, and the only way you can, you can find out is if you spend time in prayer, and God's going to always speak to you gently. Let's turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 6 through 8, and this is where we're going to stay for the most part of, of my message there's going to be seven points. I know it's like, oh, it's, it's not seven points to heaven, but um, it's, seven, it's seven gifts that, uh, that Apostle, I believe it's Apostle Paul wrote the book of Romans. Seven gifts that Paul, that Paul talks about that God can give us and that will help us in ministry, that will give us a ministry. So let's go ahead and read this. So Romans 12, verse 6, says, In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith, faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If your gift, if your gift is giving, or if it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take responsibility seriously. And if you have the gift for showing kindness to others, do it, do it gladly. So I think this, this scripture just shows that there's so many different things of ministry that we can do, and we don't have to overcomplicate it, right? Your gift may seem so minuscule, what you're good at, what you're good at doing, but it can be such a, play such a big role in God's kingdom, right? So we're going to dive into each of, these, each of these gifts and what they mean and, and examples of, of, of uh, biblical characters that have these giftings and see if we can relate. And hopefully um, the goal of my message is is if you, you leave tonight that you can feel that nudge on your heart that God's calling you to and, re, and see what your giftings are. And hopefully this new year will, you can reveal those giftings and also pray for new giftings. And we're not just excluded to just one gift from God. So there's seven gifts that Paul, Paul mentions in this scripture. And we'll go through them. And the first one was, uh, he mentions gift of prophecy. And Prophecy, there, I believe, there has, uh, there's different levels of prophecy, right? It says, Paul says, speak out with how much faith you have, right? We can often prophesy the prom God's promises into our life if we speak with faith, right? We can get a prophetic word from God and speak onto other people's lives. So there's different levels of prophecy depending on how much faith you have. The gift of prophecy is, 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 God's, is God's part of it. He gives you the gifts of, gift of prophecy, now, how much faith you have, that's up to you, right? We know that faith, you have to exercise your faith to, to build your faith, just like, you know, going to the gym and, and exercising your muscles. If you know that there's uh, something that requires, re requires you trusting in Jesus um, and you go ahead and, and follow through with it, that's going to build your faith because you're, you're relying on your faith and you're building your faith. So prophecy, the gift of prophecy is from God. How, how much you prophesy, that's up to you, how much faith you have. And your faith is up to how much you exercise your faith. And we know that faith is from hearing the word of God. And so we must hear the word of God and continue to remain in God. And your faith will grow. And there's, there's, there's many examples of Jesus prophesying to, um, to, uh, to people. There's obviously, we know, prophets from the Old Testament. But my favorite example of, G of Jesus prophesying is to that lady at the well, the Samaritan woman. We all know that story. Is he, he was able to speak into her life about what her sins are, and that led her, that led her to salvation. So your gift of prophecy can lead, every gift that I'm going to be talking about is going to lead people to salvation, whether it's big or small, whether, whether the gift is just simply a gift of kindness or a gift of teaching or, or whatnot. But everything leads people to salvation. That's the goal. That's why God gives us gifts. So gift of prophecy, so we went over that. So second one he mentioned was serving others. This one uh, is very, um, we, we know about this gift. A lot of people, um, it's very common for leaders in the church to have the gift of serving. Otherwise, they wouldn't want to serve or they wouldn't be able to serve well. So this is a gift that we can receive from God. And a servant's heart is wonderful. I, we all know the saying that a pastor is the servant of the church, right? So first and foremost, he's the servant. And that example was taken from Jesus. It says Jesus came not to, be, not to serve but to be served. So, the, and, and Jesus also, also says, if you want to be greatest, greatest among yourself, for, you must be, first be the least. So, being the pastor, being, or, you know, being a youth pastor or a leader, 
if you have the gift of serving, you know that it's, you have to serve others. That's your purpose. And through that, you can lead souls to salvation. The gift of teaching. I almost forgot, I almost, when I was doing this, the bullet points, it was, it was so short in that verse of Romans. It's like, if you teach, teach well, I almost missed it. I'm like, I thought there were six. But the gift of teaching, this one's really important. And I'm glad I double-checked myself and, and put it in there. So the gift of teaching, why is it important? It seems, eh, you know, there's other, it doesn't make sense. We're not in a classroom. But if, you're, if, you, if you recall, you know what the disciples called Jesus? Teacher or rabbi. So that means, rabbi means teacher. Teaching, I feel like, is on, a, on another level. If you have the gift of teaching, it's an amazing gift, and I think that can take you, that God can use that wonderfully. So if you're able to teach well, and you, you, you probably have the gift of teaching from God, and if you apply that in ministry, it's amazing. So a lot of times where you can see this gift of teaching in ministry is senior pastors that have retired and mentor other pastors. So it's, it's another, in, other, in other words, it's discipleship. So you're, you're raising up other leaders. You're teaching other, other people how to, how to lead churches or whatnot. So being a teacher is, is a great gift. You're sharing. You're able to teach people about the knowledge that God has given you. So it's different from being a servant or being a pastor. Being a teacher is, is a separate gift, and it's amazing um, if you, when people apply that gift in their life in ministry. A good example is uh, Joel Stocksdale's dad, Larry Stocksdale. Does anybody, anybody know him? He has a book that he wrote, uh, Model Man. I don't know if you've heard of it. Really great book. But in his book, he talks about what he's doing. And he's, I don't know if the exact number, but he's responsible for planning about like, uh, I don't know, maybe it's even in the thousands. But he has a team of like uh, 20 people, and they plant churches. And so... The gift of teaching can be multiplied so greatly in God's kingdom. It's insane. It's it's amazing, um, and that, that's just a great example. As, as for a senior pastor who retired and now is a mentor or teacher to others, his son is the senior pastor at their church. Um, I believe is John Stock. So, is his, is his son, or sorry, his son. My bad. Um, and Joel's is also his son. We know Joel. He's been to GTS. So teaching is a great is a great gift that you can receive from God. And if you have the ability to teach naturally that, that God has given you, apply that to ministry. Maybe you can teach Sunday school. I know Igor teaches Sunday school. Igor Sassoon, those of you who know him. So it's an amazing gift. So, again, that's going to lead to saving souls and to, to raising up other leaders, to discipleship, impact group leaders. Um, the gift of teaching will also help you there. And just it's going to grow God's kingdom. The gift of encouraging others. This one's great. And my, the reason why I like this, I think this is so important, it's, is because we do life together. It's, it's, that, it's that, um, life, it's that, that, that friend or, or that spouse or that girlfriend or boyfriend or, or family member that can encourage you in the times where, where you're down, right? Moses had, had, this, had this sidekick called Aaron, right? He had the gift. Of, he, was, he would encourage him when Moses could, was scared to do it or whatnot. And so the gift of encouragement is really important because sometimes life can get you down. And a simple, just a word of encouragement, a smile from somebody, it might, might just be when somebody comes in the door, you, see, you, know, you, you smile and, you, and you're genuine. And that sense of encouragement will really help them. And, and sometimes um, the gift of encouragement can get mixed up with motivational speakers and all that. But... I believe there's so many motivational speakers, and that's only surface level. They're really just going to motivate your mindset, motivate maybe you to do a task, right? But if somebody has a gift of encouragement and they can encourage your soul, that's going to be internal, right? If they can encourage you to turn back to Jesus, that's going to save your life. So if you have the gift of encouragement and you're, you're able to encourage others, and if you see that opportunity to encourage somebody, do so. Don't skip, don't skip out on an opportunity. Um, there's many ways, there's many things in ministry. It's just not all in the church, right? If you, if you know that um, your sibling hasn't picked up the Bible in, you know, a week or whatnot, encourage them to read the scripture. Or if maybe your best friend hasn't gone to church in a couple of days, you can encourage them to, go, to come to service. And may, they may surrender their life back to Jesus, that service. So you don't know how you can apply your gift for God's kingdom. And the more you are led by the Spirit, the more these opportunities will continue to open up. I know... 
there's this, I've preached on this before, but we always have the conflict between our flesh and our spirit, right? You, you either, Jesus controls your life or your flesh does, right? And so the more you're led by the spirit, the more these opportunities will open up to encourage others if you do have the gift of encouragement. The second, or the fifth gift, the gift of giving. This one uh, we heard with, uh, when we read Paul was, uh, gave, gave that homeless man, he healed him. So that was an example of the gift of giving. I was trying to recall earlier, but so the gift of giving, this one is also very important. And as I'm going through these gifts, remember that God gives generously and it's not just a single gift, right? And sometimes we think of the word gift as something physical, right? But it's, it's an attribute, it's an ability that God gives you to serve others. So gift of giving, God gives seed to the sower and I'm going to add, he gives seed to the sower, not the hoarder, Right? So you must, in order to receive, you have to, in order to, to receive from God, you have to be a giver. You can't just hoard everything that God gives you. Who's uh, watched the show Hoarders? It's like where you, everything's piled up. You can't even walk. There's no, you know, there's, you'll never have, you'll never have too, you'll never have enough blessings if you just hoard it for yourself. It's better to give than it is to receive. And when you give it to others, you're able to bless them and that in turn may turn them to Jesus. Right? And it's not just giving financially. It's not just giving um, food or whatnot. Like we read in, in the scripture earlier where Peter, or I believe it was Peter, he healed the lame, right? So it's giving your time, your energy. Um, and really finances is just a form of our energy, right? It takes time and energy to make money. So that's so money is just a man-made thing. So giving is not just money. Right? Essentially, it's your time and energy that you, that you give. And if you have the will or the ability to or the desire to give, that's great. Giving is probably one of the most important things when it comes to ministry because you're always giving your time and your energy. I know uh, my wife has been, my wife Marta has been the worship pastor for 10 years. You know, that's every Monday and Tuesday she's giving and dedicating that to God. That's, and that's amazing. And everybody on the worship team is doing the same. So that's, in a, that's a really important quality to, to be in ministry is to be able to give to others. And it's not just financially. So number six, the gift of leadership. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sidetrack and go back to the, the, uh, give an example of gift of giving from the Bible. I forgot to give a good example. When thinking of like, aside from uh, Peter healing the lame, the thought that came to mind about giving was, or the scripture that came to mind was when the kid gave his bread, his fish and bread, um, to Jesus to feed the 5,000. Like I pictured, I, like I thought about it. If I pack my lunch to a concert, like, and the singer's like, hey guys, so everybody's hungry, there's no food, and then you'd come up, your, you planned, so out of, so nobody else planned, but you packed your lunch and you planned, and you have your food. To give that up, like, I, I would never do that. <laughs> so, exactly. But can you imagine, so the, he gave, he gave the, the lunch that he had packed. And it wasn't even going to, maybe it was just enough to feed Jesus, but he still gave it, right? So he had the heart of giving. He gave it, and Jesus multiplied it, feed the, fed the 5,000, and he, had his, he, had, he still had his, um, his food, and had leftovers, right? So when you give, God gives you more. So I thought that was an awesome example because I know if I put myself in that situation, that would be very difficult. I love food. I'll just eat and run home. <laughs> but, yeah, so give and God will, will give you more, and, and he'll give you back what, you've, what you gave. The gift of leadership, and we've, heard, we've all heard the saying is, oh, she's a natural-born leader, he's a natural-born leader, and it's true, God... Some people are, are naturally better at leading, or but it's a but it's a gift that you receive from God, and if you if you remember when we read the scripture, it said Peter said, if you have the gift of leadership, take responsibility seriously, right? So, leadership is is a very serious thing, and it doesn't just involve being a leader in the church, right? In everybody's lives, that hopefully one day you guys will have a family, and you'll be the leader. If you're a male, you'll be the leader of your household, so you'll be a leader there. If you're um, the oldest sibling in your family, you're a leader there. You're a leader among your friends, right? So if you have the, the gift of leadership and you have an uh, area of influence that God has given you, you have to be a responsible steward 
of, your, of the people you're leading, right? And first, before, um, and those who are leaders, right, the gift of leadership, you can also, in other words, say it's a, it's a gift of a vision, right? To, to lead people to, is to unite everybody for one purpose, right? You can unite them for one pur- purpose, but if you don't have the vision yourself, like you're just kind of wandering around the desert, right? So the gift of leadership is you have a vision that God has given you, and you're protecting that vision, and you're growing that vision, and you, you're gathering a group of people to achieve that same vision, right? So that's, and that's, that takes a lot of responsibility, and it's to be taken seriously. Like, I really admire that Andre Rojo has a vision, and he's leading all of us um, in, in, in his vision, right? And that's, and that's what a church is, right? and that's what the, the pastors are, are, are there for, is to lead and to also serve. And the more I'm going through these gifts, the more you can see that serving the church requires that every single gift is important, right? As you can see, we're going through these gifts, and these gifts can apply to every position in the church that are needed, right? And the best for last, number seven, is the gift of showing kindness. And the reason why I think this is so important is kindness can go so far in how somebody feels, and oftentimes, if a new believer, if, if if you if you come, let's say, let's use an example of getting a haircut. You come and get your haircut, right? And, and you have great customer service, and they're really kind to you, right? What you're going to most likely remember is how you felt, how you, or how they made you feel. Same thing with the church. I know for me personally, sometimes if I, you know the first time I actually came to here, I didn't remember the message. I felt the kindness that was shown to me, right? That's what, that's what the, if somebody's going to come to church, a new believer, they're not going to remember the message most like. They're probably going to remember how they felt there more than anything, right? They're going to remember the love that they felt. And just a little bit, just a little further in, in Romans, Paul says, love each other with genuine affection, right? When you're showing kindness, it has to be genuine. So that's why it's, it's a, gift, a gift of showing kindness because it's, you can be genuine and you can be fake, right? When you when you genuinely show love and and kindness to somebody, they'll remember that. It'll it'll touch their heart. It'll touch their spirit, and they and and they'll. It's almost like experiencing a, a piece of God's love, right? We carry God lives in, or Jesus lives in our heart, and Jesus is love. So when you are showing your kindness, you're 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 letting somebody, a non-believer, experience God's love, right? And that's so important. And that's why. Um, being kind and, 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 and loving is so important. And Jesus always also says that you, uh, they will know that you are my, dis- I think I'm paraphrasing, but people know that we're Christian based on our love, right? The love that we show more than anything. I love that Paul saved uh, kindness for last. It really is really important. And this is somebody, This in all these gifts, these are gifts that, you can, you can desire, you can pray for, and God will give you these gifts, right? There's this passage that says, an earthly father, if a son asks for a, a fish, he will not give him a rock or a snake, right? How much greater is our father in heaven? So ask for these gifts, and you'll receive these gifts, and these gifts will not only bless your life, but they'll bless the lives of others in your life. And everybody around you, just like the kid, he gave up, well, he gave up what he had, but it blessed everybody around him, and it came back to him probably like in tenfold because they had baskets left over. I don't know if it was the same story, but in one of the, they had they they collected baskets of leftover food, right? So these gifts aren't just for yourself; they're for others, right? God gives to the to the sower, right? And these are, these are all gifts that you can receive from Jesus. And some of you may already have them, but aren't using them for ministry. So if, if out of these seven gifts. That I, that I talked about, if you felt that part of your characteristic or your characteristic or um, your personality maybe matches one of these gifts and you might have one of these gifts and you just don't know it because you've never tried to serve, this may be just God nudging you towards that direction to serve and use that gift for others, not just for yourself, right? Not just, not just to be kind just to, for yourself or but to, to use it for others, to, to lead others, right? To give, to encourage, to teach, to serve, to prophesy, 
Let 2018 be the year where you discover your gifts or you receive your gifts, or better yet, you start using your gifts for ministry, right? To bless others, to lead others to Jesus. All these gifts are to grow God's kingdom. What's God's kingdom? It's, it's to save souls, right? It's like a mustard seed that you plant it and the tree grows, right? What little we have, we give to God and God multiplies it. God's kingdom is about multiplication. So use these gifts that you have, God will use them to save others. You know, before I started really being involved in church, I didn't, I didn't know that I had any gifts or but what you don't, tr- before, what you don't try or what you don't try out or, or well, how should I say this? If you don't try, you'll never know if, you, if you're able to do it or if you have the ability. Paul says gifts and ability. So God also gives you abilities to do things very well in the words of, of Paul. And, it's, and there's more, and there's, God gives us more abilities than just those seven. Those are the seven that Paul lists. But there's abilities that are that have nothing to do with being spiritual, maybe like making crepes or whatever. You have anybody has random abilities, but those abilities you can use for God's ministry. I know um, Diana, she sets up the food. You know, that's she's using that her ability to organize and to and to put food on the put food out pretty so we can all eat it. You know, she's serving in that way. And there's other examples of how you can serve and what abilities you may have. But if you don't if you don't ever try or you don't ever um, answer God's calling, you'll never know if you have those abilities. So my call to you guys is to really pray and, and, and do some soul searching and, and ask God, what are, what are my gifts and what can I do for you and how can I use those gifts, whether in church or in your circle of influence at school, at work, or wherever. So with that, I want to call you guys to stand to your feet and we're going to go into a prayer. And in this prayer, don't be afraid to ask God and prophesy into your life about receiving gifts, right? Because God is a, is, a, is a generous giver. And the first uh, gift was the gift of prophecy. I believe there's many scriptures in, in the Bible that you can speak prophetically over your life. I know for me, the big one was, it says God, was, uh, God is a protector of the fatherless. I took that scripture to, to heart and I prophesied that over my life and God has always been with me. So.